Okay, this sermon's entitled, Being Content. And I'm doing this sermon to let people know that um, having a lot of materials and a lot of uh, physical things, physical commodities, will never satisfy you. So I'd like to open with prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for allowing us to understand your word and to get into your word and just to love your word and to be content with your word. Right, it's all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we need to be content with God's word. The Bible makes this very clear that God will give us the desires of our heart. Now, turn over to, to Psalm 37. Psalm 37. I've noticed that when people are not content with life and the things of life, most of the time it's because they're, they're not in God's word. Now, this sermon is for saved people only. It's for, it's for believers. If you're not saved, um, check out one of my sermons on how to be saved. and you know, I can At the end of the sermon, I'll go over the gospel at the end. But for saved people... We need to be content with God's word. We need to love God's word. We need to be. We need to say, "Hey, God has given me eternal life. He has saved me by His grace. He's given me all the spiritual blessings in the heavenlies," as it says in Ephesians chapter one, verse three. And we need to be content with that. That's why the twenty-third Psalm says, "The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want." What does it mean to not want? It means to stop wanting things you don't need. We should be content with what you have. Stop worrying about things you don't have. You don't need. You know, people shouldn't be worrying about, you know, video games and television and, and, and music. We don't need that stuff. And it's not just that. We shouldn't we shouldn't be you know we shouldn't be pining, I guess, or yearning for yearning for and have a penchant for things that we don't need and for things that are not of God. So it says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the, the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. So if you trust in the Lord and you do what the Bible says by reading it every day, by obeying it, you know, and it's not for salvation for, for crying out loud. That salvation is by grace. But when you ever, when you trust in the Lord, it says you'll be fed. God will feed you. Okay, God makes will take care of you. God will provide for you. Okay, that's what the Bible teaches. Now look at verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. So we need to be delighting ourselves in God's word. How do you do that? By reading it. People need, We need to read our Bibles every single day. And it's to help us grow. Okay? Now, you don't have to... Like I said, I'm not getting into all that. My point is there are people that, that don't want to read the Bible. They don't like God's word. And, and that's why they're never content with anything in life. That's why they don't, they're, never, they're never satisfied. The only thing that satisfies a person is God, and I'm going to prove that. Turn over to Ecclesiastes. There's nothing satisfying about this world. Now, it's, there, there, there's what you call temporal gratification. You know, you can, you can, you can uh, satiate the fleshly desires and fleshly lusts and fleshly pro proclivities, and there, it's just temporary. It's not a long-lasting. It's not a long-standing. It's not a permanent. It's not a, an, an eternal. There's no eternal value to it. Because the only way to get any, any um, have any eternal joy is to be focused on the things of God. That's why it says in Colossians chapter 3, set your affection on things above and not on things of the world. So let's take a look at Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Let's take a look at what God's word says. People should just love hearing God's word. They should love reading the Bible. We should just say, it shouldn't be a burden. It should be, oh, I get to read the Bible. Yes, I, that's what I want to do. I want to get my all this other stuff out of the way. You know, today I had some errands to run. You know what? And I had to go to a few places, get some tracks made, cut some tracks out to give to people. I went over the gospel with a ton of people today. Just everyone, you know, just pretty much everyone I bump into. Go over the and I gave the gospel to some children. What gave them a cross? Explained it to them. They believed it. They got. They were saved. Whether they were saved already, they they, they believed on Christ and they're saved. I enjoy, I love doing that. It's it's not a burden, and we should enjoy doing that. But you know what? I really like coming coming home so I can read the Bible. I get to get into God's Word. It's not it's not burdensome. It, it's it's not something I, I just grudgingly do. It's not something I'm, re, I'm reluctant to do. I, I don't I don't think of it as or view it at, or deem it as something. Well, I had I, I have to read God's Word. It's binding. It's crucial. It's it's just something I got to do because I because God is forcing me to do it. No, it's not. I enjoy doing. It. I love doing it. I love reading God's Word. I love learning learning more about God. The Bible says in James, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Draw nigh to God. You do that by reading the Bible. You get to know God better. 
And it says, He will draw nigh to you. And we need to be content with, 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 with God. We need to be content with His Word. We need to say to ourselves, I don't need all this other garbage. I don't need to watch television. I don't need to, to turn and read, pick up my newspaper and read it. I don't need to do a crossword puzzle. I don't need to sit there and talk about a bunch of garbage <coughs> with a bunch of secular people and then get my kicks from a bunch of idle chit-chat. A bunch of vain, meaningless, empty, vacuous chit-chat. Which will just basically lead you, it, it just lead, it leads you into, um, what's the word? Ennui. Well, ennui is when everything's just nothing, nothing changes. It's insipid. You know, insipidity. And, and blandness. Hey, no, that stuff, that's all it is. It's garbage. The world has nothing to offer. And the Bible makes this clear in Ecclesiastes chapter 1. It says, and let's look at verse 6, The wind goeth toward the south, and turneth about unto the north. It whirleth about continually, and the wind returneth again according to his circuits. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Unto the place from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. Now he's, he's letting us know something. There's something analogical about this. He's letting you know that, you know, you can get filled up on the world's garbage, secular garbage, things that are not uh, they're not spiritual. It's never going to satisfy you. You know, what, looking at all this smut on TV, pornography, and all these sinful things which we need to be preaching against and, and we need to be calling out, it doesn't satisfy anybody. They're never satisfied. The only thing that really satisfies a person is God's word. And you know, that's why we have to keep reading it because you know you're not you're never fully satisfied with that either. But good. That's the one thing we don't need to be satisfied with. Satisfaction basically denotes that you're going to stop it. You're, you're done. No, you don't ever need to be done reading God's Word. You can never read enough of God's Word. It's, it's a, it's a, it's this book, the Bible's alive, the, it's, as in, it says in Hebrews. The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So we can never get enough of it. Okay? Now look at verse 8. All things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. Now look at this. The eye is not satisfied with seeing nor the ear filled with hearing. So, is watching a movie going to satisfy your eye? No. Is listening to a, a, a song by Pearl Jam or whoever, whatever secular garbage you listen to, is that, or any, and it can be anything, is it going to satisfy you? No, it's not. It never satisfies. But see, God's word, you know, should give a, it should bring us joy. Now, let's turn over to Hebrews. Actually, turn to Philippians chapter 4. We need to be content with what we have. And that's the name of the sermon. Be content. And I just think there are so many people out there that are not content. And that's why they, they keep racking up a, you know, credit card bills. They keep getting, you know, having to order stuff in the mail every single day. Like that's going to make them happy. It's not going to make you happy. Things don't make you happy. Hey, I learned that a long time ago. I learned that as a child. Things do not make you happy. You know, the Bible talks about in Hebrews that the pleasures of sin are, are only for a season. Let me go ahead and we're going to turn there. We're going to look at that in this sermon. Let's go ahead and turn over to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Let's take a look at God provides for us. A lot of God providing for us has to do with um, whether, I mean, if we're going to, if we're going to be, be, be a servant of God. Okay? Now, you have to be saved first to be a servant of God, and I've already explained that in other sermons. You, whether you serve God or not is not determined if you're saved. Okay, because you're saved by grace. But see, the thing is, we should want to serve God. Now, not every believer does want to serve God. I've had people say, I don't want to want to serve God. Well, that's your problem. You know, I do want to serve God, and I want to, you know, and we should want to serve God, and if you do, God will provide. Look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 9. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly now that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherefore ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Okay, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, this is Paul, therewith to be content. Hey, no matter what state you're in, be content. You know, it doesn't matter. You may have, well, I got some pain, and be content. It, you know, that's what the that's what Paul said. I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. There's a the concept here is to be content. Now turn over to Hebrews chapter eleven. Now don't get me wrong. Sin, and whatever the sin is, I mean, it, it could be anything. 
sin is, is pleasurable. Don't don't listen to the, the idiots out there that say, well, now that I'm saved, I no longer desire sin. Well, then you're a liar. The flesh has not changed, and yes, you do desire sin. You're just a liar. The thing is, sin is pleasurable, but it's not permanent. Okay, look at verse 25. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin. Don't tell me that these people were saved, by the way, because this is the hall of faith here. So yes, sin is still pleasurable, because we still have a flesh. It's, we still have the flesh. But it says, the pleasures, of, the pleasures of sin for a season. So it's not per, that's not going to give you any long-lasting contentment, the sin. In fact, it's a rip-off. Every time you do it, it's you're like, man, what, what did I get out of that? Nothing. Okay, now turn over to uh, Hebrews 13. This is the uh, staple verse of the sermon. It says in verse 5, Let your conversation be without covetousness. What is covetousness? It's desire. And, uh, and a lot of times it's, it's a desire for something sinful or lustful. And that's another word for lust. Okay, let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content with such things. Now here's the reason why we should be content. Okay, with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Because if a person's saved, they're eternally secure. God will never leave them. He'll never forsake them. So because of that, we need to be content. You know, so many Christians out there, they wind, they, they wind their way through life. They, they worry about everything and they gripe. And I'd like to just tell them, hey, you need to just, you need to chill out. If you're saved, you've got eternal life already abiding in you. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. Jesus Christ died for your sins. He was buried and rose again. He gives you eternal life as a free gift. The moment you believe on Christ for that gift, you're saved forever, secure, and then there's a ton of things that take place simultaneously and instantaneously. So the thing is, you need to be content. Hey, you're, you're going to heaven when you die. Why are you griping? Why are you whining? Why are you you know, worrying about everything? Be content. Because I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So this sermon, like I said, just we need to just be, be, we need to be more content. We need to say, hey, I don't need all this. Hey, you know what the lack of contentment me brings? You know, prodigality, wastefulness, wastefulness, and, uh, you know, profligacy. What's all these words mean? Well, they basically mean greediness, you know, avarice. You're never satisfied. You know, you always want more. You know, you're voracious. And not voracious, like you have veracity or, you know, verity, but voracious with an O. It means you're just, you're, you're hungry. You're monstrously hungry. So the Bible tells us we need to be content with what we have. We need to be content with Jesus Christ, content with, the, with, with God's word. Because those that are not content with it, they're never going to get satisfaction anywhere else. It doesn't come anywhere else. You know, kids, think about just, just take a look at the children. They, all, they, want, they, they want toys. Even as, a, even as little toddlers, they want something in both hands. It's not, it's not, they're not satisfied with, um, with, with, you give them a little object to put in their hand. They're not satisfied with one, they want two. And, and then and once they get, and see, with kids, once they get tired of their toys, once they get bored with their toys or their video games, whatever, they want more. You know, I used to be a video game fanatic. I was a video game cognoscente. I was a video game mania, man, you know, maniac, a, a video game buff. I was a straight up hardcore video gamer. That's all I was for, a, for, for several years. And I know, I've noticed that whenever I'd get, I'd get tired of one game or conquer one game, I had to get another one. That's just the way it is. Because I was never really satisfied with it. Sure, I love to play video games, but you know what? It's not going to really give me any long-lasting, eternal joy. The only place I get that is from God's Word. From preaching sermons, from praying, for evangelizing, from reading the Bible. That's where I get real joy. So that's all I have. We need to be content with what we have, and we need to thank, we need to thank God that, he, that He's given us what He's given us. And then, you know, if we, need, if we need something else, we can pray and ask for it. Through a supplicatory prayer or whatever. So that's all I have. We need to be content, and that's just the way it is. Dear God, thank you for allowing us to, understand, to have uh, your word that tells us all these things. I just pray that you'll allow us to not be materialistic and to just be you know, spiritual and into spiritual things. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.